This is the Launch Sea Reader 3008 Plus OBD2 scan tool. Let's take it out of the box. In the box, you get the manual and, of course, the OBD2 scan tool. So, this is an OBD2 scan tool for your car or truck or motorcycle or anything like that. How do you know if it works with your car? In the United States, every vehicle since 1996 is OBD2 compliant and it will work. In other countries that may be different. So all you need to know is if your vehicle is OBD2 compliant or not. If it is, it'll work. How do you find that out? Read the book. That's why they printed it in the first place. Connector is right over here. There's a little cap on it to plug into your OBD2. Port on the vehicle which is typically under the dash, but they can hide it in other places. You got a nice screen on there. It's 2.8 inches. It's a color LCD. This particular scan tool is more of what I like to call a basic variety. It's going to do a ton of stuff for you, and we're going to talk about that, and I'm going to show you. One of the really nice things, if you have an older vehicle that is especially troublesome with the check engine light coming on, and you're in a state where they do emissions testing. Your car won't pass emissions and therefore wouldn't be able to get it re-registered and all that and it creates a big problem. There are loopholes with that and having a scan tool like this will allow you to reset the computer system in your car and turn that light out. Now sometimes you'll turn it out that light's going to come right back on which is a hard code. That means there's something really wrong and it comes back immediately. But other times it's going to take a drive cycle where you're going to have to drive maybe 15 miles or so until the car is ready to be inspected. And you'll know that because you can press the IM button right over there and that'll come up with all of the information there showing you all of what's called the readiness monitors and if you have all of those but one incomplete, your vehicle is ready to be inspected and you'll pass. Now your check engine light's probably going to come back later on, but still you get to skirt fixing the problem because, let's face it, the check engine light is basically an annoyance. A lot of times that comes on, the car runs perfectly fine. You don't get any better or worse gas mileage. It just runs fine. Now, if that light's flashing, you have a misfire problem. That's a totally different thing. But if it's just on and the car's otherwise driving just fine, now you can look it up. You don't have to go to the auto parts store. Typically, they can look it up, but they can't reset it for you. You shouldn't reset it either if you are going to get the problem fixed. You want that code stored in your car so a mechanic can read that out with his tool and do some further testing. This is going to give you the full data set of all of the parameters of the engine and that. Again, we're going to go over that in a minute. It also has a battery checker that will tell you the uh, voltage of the battery. That's not a comprehensive check. It's just to let you know if the battery is looking normal or if it's looking a bit abnormal, and then it would need further diagnosis. Uh, otherwise, that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and take this out to the car, plug it in, and we'll go through it. So in this car, it's under the dash. If it's not right there on yours, you have to go look for it. Again, the book will tell you where it is. Just plug it in. Okay, once you have it plugged in, you want to turn your ignition on till everything lights up. If you have a key, you turn it to the on or run position. If you got a button like this, do not step on the brake. And it's going to take two presses for that to come up. And now you see all the lights are on and we're ready to go. So everybody wants to see the battery function. We'll go to that first. Control panel, the buttons are real easy to, you know, left, right, up, down, OK, back, and your IM readiness monitor. We'll go over to battery, press OK. It says entering system. And it says the battery voltage is abnormal, 12.1 volts, but the engine is off. When it started, it should read normal. However, this battery is pretty low because this car really does not get driven much, so the battery has been depleted some. Main thing you're going to be doing is looking for codes in the system. We'll go over to Diagnose, press OK. 
This screen here, you're going to see fail a few times. That's okay until it finds the right thing. And it displays this. MIL status, off. That's the check engine light. There is no codes uh, that this car has. As it says in the second line, DTCs in this ETU, ECU is zero. Also shows the readiness monitors. Completed, not completed, not supported. So like I was saying, if you have a car that's stubborn to pass emissions, you can typically have one readiness not completed and still be able to have them check your car. And if the check engine light hasn't come on, then you should be able to pass. We'll go into the uh, menu here. We'll go to read codes. It comes up with the ECU. There's two listed. This depends on the vehicle once again. Typically, the first one is the engine. Second one is the transmission. We'll pick engine. And it says it has no fault codes. So we'll go back using the back button there. Back again. And then you can go to your I am readiness monitor screen. Press OK. Again, select the ECU. And this displays a chart. Anything with the universal no symbol means that it's not supported. So you ignore those. The rest will have either an X or a check. And as you can see, that everything else is checked off. This vehicle is ready to go and can be inspected right now. Data stream we're going to get into in a moment. Freeze frame will let you save the data in here. It can even be printed later on. You can do an O2 sensor test, onboard monitoring, and test the EVAP system. And on some vehicles, it can give you information such as the VIN number. Right now, we're going to go over to data stream, and this is where you're going to get a lot of good information. So now it has that. We'll go to select items for a moment. Give it a second to read. And top item on each one says all data stream of page. So in this case, that would be fuel system one status, two status, calculated load value, and engine coolant temperature. We'll select just those four right there. But as you can see, one of four, one through four of 48, that means that there are a total of 48 pieces of information that we can get. I'm going to select a select few here and I will also start the engine and let you read those numbers and I'll tell you a bit about it. So if you take a look here, there are five items that I have selected here. We're going to go ahead and start the engine now. And you can see that numbers are starting to come up. The engine RPM as you see, it's reading about 530, 550, somewhere in there. You can rev it. And it adjusts as such like that. Big number to still look at are your short-term fuel trim right there. Now this is going to jump around a bit. It depends on a number of factors, but typically anything about 10 and under means that everything is working just fine you can get even better numbers than that. Basically what it means is it's adding 13% fuel and 10%, 11% fuel on the different banks. This car has two banks because it's a V6, so each a bank of three, and that'll give you that kind of information. And you'll see also if I rev it, those numbers change. And having a value here that's a positive means that it's adding fuel which means that the engine is running lean now again if it's anything more than this you would want to look into that because that could cause a problem but otherwise uh, if it's running lean you'll typically get a little bit better gas mileage you can also see the uh, coolant temperature up there is up to 181 degrees fahrenheit you can set that to metric if you'd like Here's more on the fuel trim, where you can get a percentage. You'll notice it's 99.2 and also 99.2 on the second bank. And that means it's only really adding 0.8% as a correction over the course of things. You can see other information, number of warm-ups since diagnostic trouble codes cleared. 
191. Like I said, this car does not drive much. Engine runtime since diagnostic trouble codes cleared, 97 hours and 59 minutes. So that's kind of nice to have for information as well. You can also graph information. We'll go to view graphic items. And we're just going to select the RPM of the engine. So I think that's on the second page. Here it is. We'll press OK to select it. And then back. And there you go. So now it's showing the value and it also has a graph which is going up and down wildly. Because look at this number. That's going up and down wildly also, which is completely normal. But the graph will adjust for the uh, different things there. It shows you the minimum and maximum at the top up there. And this is just your normal idling warm engine. Now let's uh, let this scroll for a little bit. Now watch what happens. I'm going to rev it slightly. Immediately that goes down. And now it's showing higher RPM and up like that. We'll let it back down. And now this is going to move across as it goes there. And once it does that, the scale is going to readjust so you can get more accurate things. It all depends, it's all relative to the RPM that you're running at. Idling, typically, you're going to be seeing, you know, little ups and downs like that. If you're keeping it at a solid RPM higher than that, then you will see it adjusts for that. So we'll let that roll off the screen. And there you go. You see how it does that? It increases more. So it'll graph that. We'll wait for that to roll off the edge of the screen. And again, you can do this with a number of different data points uh, like we had seen before. So just like that, it'll do that. Now let's snap the throttle a couple of times. So that's pretty neat also. Another handy tool is the lookup function. We'll go into that for a moment. And now you just run these letters and numbers up to what you want. A common code that will happen on older vehicles is PO420. Press enter or OK. And it says catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one. That typically indicates that the catalytic converter is not working up to efficiency, but could also be a bad oxygen sensor. So if you have a code number, you can look it up in the tool and see all of that kind of data right there. So all around a very capable yet basic OBD2 scan tool from Launch. So once again, this is the Launch C-Reader 3008 Plus OBD2 scan tool. If you'd like to purchase this item, I'll leave a link in the video description where you can find the item available for sale on Amazon. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.